Yes, the urban angler. E, it's the urban angler. E, he's daft as a bush. He goes climbing mountains in search of Bigfoot. He, he's a daft bugger. Have you uh, ever been interviewed by uh, George Norrie or Art Bell for their show? You know, I know George Norrie. I met George Norrie. In fact, I came yeah. on the, uh, on the uh, Queen Mary. They were doing a broadcast from there, and I talked to George. And George. But George doesn't like the story. Mm -hmm. George likes the story as, oh, yeah, that's a real big one. That's yeah. a real big one. And it just, it just doesn't fit me. And he's, you know, he said to me numerous times, well, you know, I said, I'm going to do a show and I'm going to bring you on. So like, he never has. Mm -hmm. Because it, uh, his audience is not the audience who wants to know that there's not a big book. So this is the ad that we were running at the time in a, in a publication called Amusement Business. Maybe some of you are familiar with it. It was published weekly, and everybody in show business would get it. We sold the suits for $435 at the time, and uh, ran the ads. And I received a telephone call from a fellow by the name of Roger Patterson. Roger had said he wanted to buy a suit, and I said, are you a magician? He said, no, no. He said, I'm just going to play a gag on some people. I thought, guy must have an awful lot of money because <laughs> these suits are $435. This is Bob Hieronymus, who wore the suit in the film that you saw with Roger Patterson. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to show you that exact same mask and the shoulder pads. These shoulder pads right here are the shoulder pads that we use to, to build up the suit. Now, the reason, oh, oh incidentally, I wanted to show you that our gorilla suits did get better. That's a suit right there that we made for a magician you've probably never heard of. His name's David Copperfield. And, uh, and it, it, uh, that suit does, does, uh, does everything. But the, uh, when Roger Patterson called me back after he received the suit, and he asked me, first of all, on the phone, he said, he said, it, does it look like a real gorilla? And I didn't know that he did not want it to look like a real gorilla. He wanted it to look like a Neanderthal man. So I said, well, it looks like a Hollywood gorilla. So I shipped him the suit. Well, for, oh, I want to tell you this also. He said to me, I'll tell you much. He says, how much is it? I said, it's $435. He said, well, I'm not sure I can use this. And he said, I'll tell you what, you send me the suit, and if I can use it, I'll send you a check, and if I can't use it, I'll send it back to you. I thought about that for 60 seconds, well, maybe 30 <laughs> seconds. And I said, listen, here's what I want you to do. You send me not a check, you send me a money order. If I can use it, I can use it. <laughs> I said, I'll hold on to the money order. You see the suit. If it fits, it works, fine. If not, you call me back right away, send the suit back, and I'll send your money order back. Well, it took about six months or three more, four months to receive a request from him, and I found out the reason why he did not have any money at all. But he went out and raised money from other people, explaining to him this project that he was going to do, producing a Bigfoot walking through the forest and putting it on film. And he raised money from him, and he sold people for about $1,000. He sold seven people. A 50% portion of the project, America. of all the projects, <laughs> with seven different people. Seven different people. After the film was shot, and then not one person received one single dime. And all seven of them sued him. Roger Patterson rented a camera from a ca camera shop in Yakima, Washington. Got the camera shop owner to show him how to operate the camera and how to jiggle it so it get it out of focus and so forth. He rented the camera, went out, got the, had the suit, and then shot the film. Did not return the camera. <laughs> they had to issue a warrant for his arrest to get the camera. But before he shot the film, he called me back. And he said, I have the suit here. He says, I've got a couple problems with it. He says, number one, he says, it's not massive enough. It needs shoulders and you know, build up. Look at a body bag. I said, here's what you do. You go to the high school. You talk to the coach. Tell him you want to borrow, because I thought he was just playing a gag. Want to borrow. I said, if, if, uh, as a matter of fact, if you have some that are broken, a football shoulder pads. Now, these are the football shoulder pads that were used at that time. 
the ones I showed you on the picture there with Bob Hieronymus. You can't buy this type anymore. The ones today are all padded up at the top up here. But these are smooth. So once you put the suit on, the suit looks like, the, like there's muscles moving under the, under the skin because it's moving back and forth. And that's how that was done. This is Bigfoot's head. Now, Bob Hieronymus, who wore the suit, has one glass eye. It's <coughs> on this side. This eye. This eye over here is real. When you see him walking through the forest, you only see this side. Because Patterson told him, tomorrow when we shoot this, I want you to bring along an extra glass eye. <coughs> kind of keep an eye out for me. <laughs> and they place the eye in here. So as he's walking, he turns this way, and you see the eye. As a matter of fact, there's one frame in there that you can see the sun glisten off of the eye. Very, very unusual. That's, that's Bigfoot. Now, let me tell you another story about Bigfoot. Patterson was trying to base the idea on the story of Bukwas, which I told you about earlier. The creature that, that uh, and all of Bukwas, every one of them in the Indian legends were females. There were no males. I don't know how they did that, but there were no males. And so he had, this had to be a female. So when he got it, he did one other change to the suit, and that is he added breasts to the suit. This, this is it right here. Now, I'm going to no, I better not hold like that. <laughs> <laughs> so, as he's walking through the forest, and you can see this in the film if you have to look close enough, but people say, it's a female, it's a female. Well, let me tell you what happened. I'm out shooting that, and I told you this last night, but there was some of you all of you were not there, so I'm going to tell the story again. The director came to me just before we were ready to shoot on National Geographic, and he walks up to me, and Bob is already dressed in the, in the costume, but he hadn't put the head on because he's claustrophobic. And the director said to me, he said, listen, he said, when Bigfoot walks through the forest, do the boobs bounce? <laughs> I said, what? <laughs> he said, do the boobs bounce? And what are you talking about? And he said, well, on the Bigfoot film of Patterson, the boobs bounce. I said, you are crazy. I said, first of all, I made that suit and I made this suit and the boobs don't bounce on either suit. As a matter of fact, how would you even know it? It was shot 30 feet away, and during that time, yeah, I mean, it was out of focus half the time, and so it's only in the original film. And he said, well, you could, he said, we slowed it down, digitized it, so on, and you can see the boobs bounce. And I said, well, the boobs didn't bounce in that costume, and they will not bounce on this costume. And the director said, well, then that's not a real big point, and he walks away. <laughs> Now, just a few minutes later, the director said, all right, ready. Bob around must put the head on, fasten it up, and he walked down through the forest. Now, I want you to notice this material and how it's made. This has a stretch in it that stretches actually in different directions. You can stretch the material back and forth. So as he was walking through the forest with that extra weight on there, the boobs bounced. <laughs> the first time I'd ever noticed that. The most important revelation of this exact recreation is how close Roger and Bob were to the creature. They were right on top of it, which makes the behavior even less natural. It walked away. Utterly unconcerned.
like and subscribe and send maybe some treats.